happening. With or without me. <laughs> but how many of you want to be a part of what's happening? <laughs> oh, glory. Continuous exposure. <clears throat> Continuous warnings. Continuous removal. You have no idea what's going behind the scenes. Not only governmental, but globally. But I'm telling you, Jesus is infiltrating in a tremendous, tremendous way. Globally, it's happening. We are in a time and season right now where Jesus is kicking over the tables. He's exposing everything. And he's removing. He's imprisoning. All kinds of things are happening. The wicked are fleeing. They're running. They're lying. They're deceiving. They're doing everything they can because they know their time is short. And God has given me and you something very powerful. His presence, his word, his blood, the anointing. And he gave us something very powerful. It's called the power of the sword. The power of the sword. Do you realize that only God's children can use that sword? What a unique and awesome thing. Only you can use that sword. No human can use that sword. You cannot be a human knight to use a sword. You must be an eternal light to use the eternal sword. People try to use it. And they can't, it does nothing work. Nothing works. God has given me and you a sword. There is power of the sword. There's power in this sword. It is a weapon, and it is the only weapon that can infiltrate the unseen realm. It's like, you know, you think about it. I don't know if you've seen lately, but <clears throat> they've just, um, it was, I just saw it the other day on, on uh, History Station or something, that we now have laser beams that we're going to use for weapons. They can travel multiple speeds of light, knock down missiles before they can even hit the space. They penetrate through everything. And they're not colorful. You don't see them. They're not red, blue, green. They're invisible. And they have just come up with this. It will be soon put on our ships and everywhere else is one of the most powerful weapons in the world. And other countries will begin to fear it. It has been designed by an organization called uh, DARPA. And it's called, um, I forgot what it's called. You know, some, they got a demonic name for everything, you know. <laughs> some goddess name or god name, you know. Some false god and goddess name. Uh, I think it was Nithium or no. Anyway. Anyways, but we have a sword that's even more powerful than that. Their sword can power can penetrate worldly things. Our sword can penetrate eternal into the unseen realm. Would you turn to First Corinthians chapter two? First Corinthians chapter two. In verse one through five. Somebody there? Amen. Let's speak it. And brother, when I came to you, um, I, I, when I came to you, I did not come with what? Excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in tremble, much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, 
but in demonstration of the Spirit and of what? Power. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the what? Power of God. This is faith connected to power. Faith connected to power. Not words of humanism, but words that were spoken, written, and released by the presence of God. Does everybody get it? This is the area where faith is connected to power. Everything is associated, the end result of everything, and the battle is over power. Everything. It's about power. Who has control? Who has territory? Everything's about power. And 1 Corinthians chapter 4. In verse 18. It says, Now some are puffed up as though I were not coming to you, but I will come to you shortly if the Lord wills. And I will not, I will know not the word of those who are what? Puffed up, but the what? Power. A lot of talk, no power. For the kingdom of God is not in what? Word. Now I want you to understand, he means that this is not in human words. But in what? But in power. In power. It is not in carnal words. It is in power. The words that produce power are eternal words. Does everybody get it? They're in what power? What do you want? Shall I come to you with a rod or in love or in a spirit of gentleness? Not word, but in what? Power. It is the power of Christ that separates us from the world, which is influenced by the power of evil deception. The end result is power to overcome your past of the old man, temptations, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. It is power to overcome pride, all distractions, influences, and emotional attachments. It is to overcome. Why do we have power? So we can fulfill the mission. Without power, you can't fulfill the mission. That's why Jesus said specifically in Acts chapter 1, he said, listen, I am leaving and I'm sending my power that you saw demonstrated. I'm going to send my power in 10 days. I'm going to fulfill a feast called Pentecost. And on that day, I'm going to send my power, which is called my anointing. It will be in this power, in this anointing, will be my eternal presence, there will be power, and there will be truth. My words will be in there. I will give you everything in this. And it will be directed and brought to you and carried by my spirit, who is called holy. And on that day, you shall receive power when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. I want you to know he told 500 disciples this. And only 120 showed up. The rest got distracted. They lost sight. They got caught up in all kinds of things, in their families and their work and whatever. They got distracted. But only 120 showed up and received the power of Christ. The Christ that dwells in us. So that they could say, Who's in, he is in me is greater than he is in the world. So they could say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So they can say, I am more than a conqueror. And if God be for me, who can be against me? Because of the power of Christ that came in then. Because they were willing to wait the 10 days and obey God. And they receive the power of the Holy Spirit called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And not only that, he gave them a tongue that changed. He gave them a new voice. He gave them a new tongue. He gave them a new language because he could directly speak to them. That's what's called tongues. And then he can release revelation knowledge to his people that the enemy could not interpret so that it could be brought into their spirit, but the enemy couldn't see it. 
And then the anointing of the power of Christ through the Holy Spirit would bring it up at a certain time to bring revelation and direction or strategies. Because even the word says that those who pray in tongues, it will increase your faith. <clears throat> and remember now, we are at a place where it's faith connected to power. Faith connected to power. See, you would get new eyes when this power came on you. And only through that power of the anointing could you hold the sword. Could you carry the sword? Or it now becomes in your mouth. Is everybody okay? Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. The power of the sword. Hallelujah. In verse 10. Ephesians 6 verse 10. See, it's, it's amazing to me still that there's so many people that do not use the sword. They don't even believe in the sword. In verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the what? And the power of his might. Hello. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to what? Stand against the wiles or the trickeries of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Now I want you to know that principalities is what runs the government. <clears throat> against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, girding your waist with what? Truth, putting on a breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all fiery darts from the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit or in tongues. Being watchful to descend with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. It is the power of Christ to battle against the unseen forces. That's why you and I have the sword of what we call the spirit. But it's the power of the sword. People can carry a sword around them and it has no power. The power of Christ. It is the power of Christ to battle against the unseen forces of evil that control and influence the hearts and minds of humanity. This must become a reality to you and I. It's controlling in all government and religions and the economy. It causes separation from truth, distracting with lust and greed. Then causes mankind to war and destroy against themselves while they're profiting over human bloodshed. And then they offer up our children as sacrifices to their false deities. This is reality. Is the indwelling power of the Christ that holds the power of the sword. It is the most feared weapon in the unseen realm. The sword is made by the word and held by the anointing. I'm going to say that again. The sword is made by the word and held by the anointing. <clears throat> Ezekiel 21. Oh, hallelujah. And you can't use anybody else's sword. Only the sword that was predestined and created for you can you hold and grip. Remember when David, when Saul tried to give uh, David his armor equipment, 
I said, man, I, it was, didn't fit right. He couldn't do nothing with it. The sword he was dragging, like, man, this is crazy. I can't do this. Because <clears throat> it wasn't his. Oh, hallelujah. Ezekiel 21 and verse 14. You therefore, son of man, prophesy and strike your hands together. The third time, let the sword do double damage. It is the sword that slays. The sword that slays the great men that enters their private chambers. I have set the point of the sword against all their gates that the heart may melt and many may stumble. Ah, it is made bright. It is grass for sl slaughter. Swords at the ready. Thrust right, set your blade, thrust left. Wherever your edge is ordered, I also will beat my fist together and I will cause my fury to rest. I, the Lord, have spoken. Everyone say, God wants me to be his sword. Oh, snap. He didn't say, oh, snap. <laughs> that is the sword of the Lord. Amen? In Hebrews 4, power of the sword. Hebrews 4. <clears throat> Verse 11. What is the sword made of? The word and held by the anointing. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is what? Living and what? And powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and joints in marrow, and it is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give what? Account. Wow. Power. Of the word is executed with the sword. Everybody got it. The power of the word is executed with the sword. In Psalm 149. Somebody there? In verse 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Why is the high praises of God in their mouth? For the anointing. Has everybody got it? <clears throat> and the two-edged sword in their hand. To do what? Execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute on them the written judgment, which is the word of God. This honor have all his what? Saints, not heathens. Saints. Praise the Lord. Listen, again, no human can handle the sword of the Lord. Only you and I can, because we are his offspring. See, this must become such a reality. That when you are decreeing the word of God and that sword is coming forth, it is light, it is penetrating, it is power. But it must be backed by the anointing all the time. That's God's presence. That's when the word does not return void. It is an honor. It's a part of our inheritance as his offsprings. Again, you and I are the only ones that can handle the sword of the Lord. <laughs> In 2 Peter chapter 1. Verse 
2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. Is everybody there? Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord and his divine power having given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Lust. But also, for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if, that means you must cooperate, these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is what? Short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Wow. You will never what? Stumble. And for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Divine power to use the power of the sword. It's always released to you and me. That's why we praise and worship. That's why we get in God's presence. That's why we ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why we speak in another language. 2 Timothy 1. In verse 6. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. And what gift was that? Holy Spirit. <laughs> For God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear. But what? Power and love and a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of his prisoner. But share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Before time began. None of this was here, and God already had it set. Then he created Remember, the first thing he did was create time. Because he had to take something out of eternity and encase it with time. That's what he calls the universe. It's encased in time. One day we're going to book this place out of here. Amen? we out of here. See ya. No more bound by the universe of time. They're still trying to figure out the universe and all of this stuff and galaxies. <laughs> it's all going to get rolled up one day. They're spending more time on that. They need to seek the one who created it. <laughs> Verse 10. But it has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, <clears throat> life and immortality, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. And for this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. So hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. This you know that all those in Asia have turned away from me and among whom are Pelagius and Hermangius. The Lord grant mercy on them all. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Huh? 
Hallelujah. <laughs> God is good. <laughs> in other words, the world, one of the things about the world, if grab hold of this, is the world denies the word and denies the power of the sword. Amen? So Jesus said, I've come to bring you a sound mind, love, and power of the sword. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Amen? But I want you to know it says life and death in the power of the tongue. Because the power is the end result all the time. With no power, there's no result. I'm going to say it again. With no power, there's no result. With no anointing, there's no result. Why? Because the word becomes ammunition. It becomes ammunition. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. Let's speak it. But know this, that in the last days perilous signs will come for men who will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but doing what? Denying the power. And from such people turn away. What did they deny? They denied the word and the power of the sword. They deny it. The world denies the word and the power of the sword. Because they're involved in their own power, their own talents, their own abilities, their own strength. They worship the things that they create, that they do with their own hands. Not giving glory to God. And that is their reward. Psalm 17. Power of the sword. Verse 13. Psalm 17, verse 13. Arise, O Lord, confront him, cast him down. Deliver my life from the wicked with your sword. With your hand from men, O Lord, from men of the world who have their portion in this life, and whose belly you fill with their, your hidden treasure. They are satisfied with children and leave the rest of their possessions to their babes. As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. Oh, hallelujah. Deliver my life with your sword. See, your life is sustained now by using the sword. If you're not willing to use the sword, the enemy will attack. He will take advantage of you. There is power of the sword. It is used by warriors. We are to be called soldiers and warriors in the kingdom. We are more than citizens. Amen? In 2 Timothy chapter 2. That's why there's training for reigning. We must be able to look at ourselves with the true identity that Christ sees us as, not what we see ourselves as. We must look at what he sees you at. Because as a man thinks, so he is. See, if... if God sees us differently than what we see ourselves. We are so influenced by everything else around us that we see ourselves according to what we've been taught through knowledge, through experiences, through pains, 
through sufferings, through joys, through victories, and through failures. We look our, that's how we, ident we have a tendency to identify ourselves. That is in the human standard of living. But you and I are no longer humanites. We're eternal lights. So we must look at ourselves at what Christ sees us. He sees us as overcomers. He sees us as warriors. He sees us as righteous. He sees us as victorious. He sees us in a different arena than you and I see us. And that is the identity that we hold in Christ. We are hidden in him. In him and us. And a sword and the power of the sword that he's given to me and you is for a continuous victory life. To cut loose. To penetrate. The word that heals. The word that exposes. It is a sword that works on both sides. That's why it's two-edged. But there is power in that sword through the anointing. It is light. It's got its own beam. It's got its own laser. It not only penetrates dimensional realms, but it penetrates all into eternity. It can strike from this physical realm all the way into the second heaven where the demonic forces are at. And only the offspring of Christ have an inherited authority and permission to use it. That's it. Oh, hallelujah. 2 Timothy 3. Are we there yet? Oh, no, I mean, um, 2 Timothy chapter 2. And uh, there, verse 1. Would you read it with me? You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men who, who, will, who are able to what? Teach others. Everyone should be able to teach. Everyone's called to be a teacher. You therefore must endure hardship as a what? Good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life or this world that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. This is so powerful. One of the things the enemy likes to do is distract individuals so they get caught up, caught up in themselves. They go into woe is me syndromes. The affairs of this worldliness will distract and contaminate, causing weakness of faith and the lack of power to use the sword of God. They become compromised, complacent, they call on Jesus, but Jesus said, listen, use the sword. God always answers you in an arena of something from his word to utilize. Matthew 10. Matthew chapter 10. Even so, when you're singing the words, you're, singing, you're decreeing the words, that sword that is coming out of your mouth is coming back to. It's coming back to convict. It's coming back to expose. It's coming back to heal. It's coming back. Matthew 10, verse 34. Let's speak this together. Jesus said what? Do not think I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a what? His sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be of those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross. Now here he tells us, here's the sword. He who does not take his cross. He who does not take the sword and fight to come after me is not worthy of me. Remember the cross that Jesus hung on? 
remember if you take that out of the ground, I had a vision one day, a hand from heaven came, pulled that cross out of the ground, and it became a sword. I thought, wow. He says, I brought this for you. It is the sword. It is the power in the sword through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he who does not take his sword or his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will what? Will find it. The cross is the sword. 1 Samuel chapter 21. So Jesus, the only way he'd get, get on the cross was to deny himself. Hallelujah. See, self cannot hold the cross. Self cannot hold the sword. <laughs> That's why we must deny ourselves. There's that level of death that God always requires. I believe the, more, the greater level of death you reach, I believe the greater the sword, the power of the sword there is. 1 Samuel chapter 21. That's why some people are still carrying around a nail clipper instead of a sword. Hallelujah. <laughs> First Samuel, is everybody there? What did I say? 21. Okay. <clears throat> Trying to cut a devil's head off with a nail clipper. That's all they did is give him a manicure. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, or a pedicure. I don't know. First Samuel 21, is everybody there? Verse 9. So the priest said to David, the sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, there, is, there it is, wrapped in cloth behind the ephod. If you will take that, take it, for there is none other except that here. And David said, there is none like it. Give it to me. Now, I want you to grab hold of something, because when Goliath, who is a Nephilim, hello? He's a Nephilim hybrid, giant. From the seed and the bloodline of Satan, Lucifer, the serpent that went into women. Amen. And there are fallen angels that went into women. And he was the offspring. So he's a Nephilim hybrid who was going to try to fight David. Now, Goliath was huge. He carried a sword, quite heavy. David was anointed, though. Goliath wasn't. David struck Goliath in the head, representing that's where the battle's at, the mind. See, because Goliath tried to entice David. He said, now you basically called him a little wimp. What are you going to do against me with all of this armor and look how much bigger I am than you? But David said, I'm not coming to you with a sword or shield. I'm coming to you with the word of God which was actually the sword. <laughs> and he took a stone and slung it, representing the, the word of God being a rock. A stone comes from a piece of rock. And he hit him in the head, and the dude fell down. But then he went and grabbed his sword, which now became David's sword. See, and then he cut his head off. That's what we do with the sword. The sword of the spirit, the power of the sword is to detach the head of darkness so that the head of Christ takes over. We are warriors and fighters. We're not to be wimps. We're to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. It is very vitally important as warriors and fighters that we begin to see ourselves as sword carriers, as the sword of the Lord. Wherever you go, whatever you decree, because you're backed by the anointing. 
you will cut, cut loose individuals that have been taken captive and prisoners. Cut the heads off of the serpents. But you must maintain something. A pure heart and clean hands. A pure heart and clean hands. Those must be maintained all the time. Amen. When David touched that sword, it became the sword of righteousness. <laughs> and it killed the Nephilim hybrid of evil. 1 John chapter 2. <clears throat> the power of the sword. Glory. Jesus said it. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword, his sword. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. <clears throat> For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from, uh, from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made what? Manifest. That none of them were of us. But you have a what? An anointing from the Holy One. And you know all things. I've not written you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it in that no lie is of the truth. But who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, in other words, Jesus is the power. Jesus is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. He was the anointed one. See, so that's why we no, no, no longer acknowledge Jesus as human. Amen? He's no, it's no longer that way. He's not human. He never was human from the beginning. He just put a form of humanity on, but he really wasn't human at all. <laughs> he was God. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Hmm. Therefore, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you will also abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised you and I, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you, lie you, or manipulate you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you don't need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. You will do what? Abide in him. And I want to go to 1 John chapter 5 and close here. Glory. In verse 12, 1 John chapter 5, verse 12, He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you. Who believe? What's the word believe mean? Follow. In the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Now, this is the confidence that we have that if we ask anything according to his will, he what? He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. There is sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. In other words, you need to intervene. All, righteous, all unrighteousness is sin. 
And there is sin not leading to death. But the wages of sin leads to death, doesn't it? We know that who's ever born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the world is, lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols or anything that would contaminate or cause distraction. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you continue to keep us filled with your spirit, empowered, and that the true identity of who we are according to the way you see us would be well known to us in our minds, in our imaginations, in our emotions, and even in our will. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen.